Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial, and in this video, we're going to be starting on actually creating some materials. So in the last video, I did a quick rundown on all the different things here, or at least the basic things of a material of in V-Ray. So if you haven't caught that, you know, go look at the previous video and then come back to this video and then we can start look at it. All right, so. I booted up pure ref here um, so that we have our references ready to when we need to create these materials. And um, to begin with, I'll just be making the default materials that we'll be using as a base. And then we will start looking at the textures afterwards. So the first material we can create here is the black surface material, which is, you know, it's a has a fairly high glossiness. Um, this black plasticky thing has maybe a little bit of actual um, bumpiness to it so we might be looking into creating a little bump map for it or something but we'll 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 deal with that later so in order to actually see what we're doing uh, with our materials we can use the material editor and its previews um, for most of it but it's a nice thing to just have a light source ready um, so that we can actually do a bit of rendering. So I'll just create a fairly large light source, go to our front view and adjust its angle a little bit. Maybe something like this. So per default in V-Ray, if you just render, you won't actually get anything. Um, let's just go here and make a plane, sorry. Um, you won't actually get any results if you just render with no light sources at all. Uh, you will need a light source because, you know, otherwise you'll just have a black render. So now, when we render the next time, we could go to the light source, sorry. It has a default multiplier of 30, which is way too much for uh, a typical viewport rendering. Um, I'll explain that later. So we'll change that to something like four or three. Go to options and make the light source invisible. This will make it invisible in the render itself. So if we did render from here, the light wouldn't block for the object itself. It'll still be in the scene and create light. It will be seen by reflections, but it won't be seen in the render itself. So we shouldn't. it shouldn't be able to block our view. All right, so something like this in the view, and then we can actually start applying materials to our object and we will be able to start a rendering production or whatever, and we can just, you know, wait for the Embry Street to be done. And there we go. So we can press stop and we can press H to get away, uh, to get rid of our history over here. We can also actually press Control L to get rid of the layer parts of our VFB, the V-Ray frame buffer here. Um, so it won't take up too much space um, for the tutorial purposes here, um, where I can only use one screen to actually show you guys what we're doing. So it's just, you know, nice to know. So the first material I'm going to make is this, uh, the black material up here. It's not, it's not completely black, but it's probably pretty black. So we'll go ahead and create a dark diffuse with a reflect of almost white and Push, pull down our glossiness a little bit, so maybe something like 0.7 or something like that. So when we look at it now, if we open the V-Ray VFB and start the, um, we can start the uh, interactive rendering by pressing uh, this teapot with a play icon, it'll start the interactive rendering. If we do that and we change our view, we can get you know different views. We can start looking at the top a little bit and get an idea if this interacts like we want it to to the light. It might spread a little bit too much. Um, not that much, it's fine, something like that. It needs to be a fairly soft um, reflection. Yeah, something like that, it's not too bad. So obviously our, you know, what we do is kind of dependent a lot on the, on the lights, whatever we can reflect and so on, so you know, Play a little bit around with it, create a bigger light source to get, you know, so it's easier to hit the those angles so we can see easier the results of what we're doing. So something like that. I can stop the interactive rendering and just remember to press save. So now that we have saved and everything, we can go into creating the 
material, which is going to be the base for the metallic surface we have here with the mesh and everything. Um, we're not going to create the mesh just yet. We will be looking at actually creating, you know, the, um, the, the base of it instead. So we need it to be applied to the right surface. So we can go into our polygons and select only these middle polygons. We go ahead and press on the show end result over here. We can see that because of our edges, um, the turbo smooth actually pulls down quite a lot. So if we grow our selection by one, um, we can actually go ahead and select all of these uh, polygons that we want. And we can apply this material. This is just a copy of the old material, so it'll have the same color right now. But from here, we can create a darker diffuse, um, maybe get a glossiness that's a little bit higher and a middleness of one. If we do that, we should get something that looks a lot more metallic and a little bit more like how we want it to look like. It might be a bit too dark actually. So make it a little bit lighter, put on interactive rendering. So the darkness of this uh, material is determined by our environment. And since our environment is black and this is fairly reflective, you know, we can spread the reflections a little bit more too much. Maybe, yeah, maybe around this. Um, so when we start looking at the lighting and everything, we will need to address, you know, how this is reflecting its environment and because it's all black right now it won't look too good yet but you know we'll we'll get there at some point um of other materials we have for this scene um there is the diode uh the diode itself uh, needs something i think we'll just give it a quick base of a uh, grayish with no metalness yeah something like that make it a little bit reflective, not too much. Just so it can catch the light if we want to. And also, you know, it's a good habit to actually uh, name your uh, material so you know which is which. So we'll call this diode. Uh, we'll call this metal. And we'll call this black plastic. So now that we know, now we keep and we have an idea of what is what, basically, uh, it'll make it a lot easier when we when we go from here. All right, so we need to prep a few things because I kind of want to make this into two different materials. So we have one material, which is the top part, and then we have the other material, which will be the mesh part of this um, of the mesh on its on the speaker itself. Um, so we need to choose where one starts and the other stops. And we can't really do that right now because if I select these polygons and I put on show end result, this is way far too down. And if I, if I grow my selection with just one, so it'll it'll include that one part of the chamfer here. It, this will be, you know, not enough. It's actually weird why it's not showing. There we go. Um, so we need it to like, not include some of these polygons up here. So the way we can do this is that we can create a loop all the way around to maybe here. Do the same for the bottom part, something like this. Select these two loops and chamfer them with zero segments so that we'll get these two. Press OK to that. Select the polygons in the middle, grow them maybe once go to here so now we'll have this you know lip down here which will basically be our you know what we need to have selected so for this part this can be the metal so it needs to be the same material basically but we'll call this metal mesh and we'll apply this to our selection instead so now we've prepped the model and we need to go out of our selection we've basically prepped our model for exactly that oh <laughs> I messed that up. When we applied it to our selection, we were inside the turbo smooth, so we need to be here when we apply it and apply it to our selection there. This should be okay. So if we look at it now, we have this as ID four, this is ID two, one, uh, and three from the diode, 
so we know that they're all different materials and if we wanted to we could look at the multi sub material but it's not really necessary so i'll just leave that alone from here so we don't need to think too much about it so basically we have all the different kinds of materials selected that we wanted to we're just going to check if everything is f as expected we have these uh, yeah i think this is fine if we don't want to include that lip down here we could, in theory, um, could take this selection, grow it, maybe to let's go for end result, take this off, grow it a few times until here. If we want this part to be metal or if we want this part to be metal. Um, I think I'm gonna create this for the middle and then need to reselect the middle part for the mesh. So this and grow it once, go to the middle mesh and apply it to our selection. Create a little bit nicer edge um, for where this goes over. So that's fine. Um, you'll notice that in the material editor, you have these uh, triangles showing which materials are applied to our object and which aren't. Right now it says that the diode and the metal materials are not, uh, even though they are. Um, this is a pretty known kind of bug in 3ds Max. If I close my material editor and open it up again, hotkey M, um, it'll be corrected, so it should be fine. As soon as I select the object, they'll highlight so the different materials apply to whatever object I have selected, they'll be highlighted and we can easily go from there. So stay tuned for the next video where we'll be looking at the texturing of, um, of this object. I've already made the textures themselves. You can do that in Photoshop or maybe Google yourself to a few textures, but I'll show you how I generally did it. Um, or not how I did it, but as in what the textures look like, and you can, you know, create your own on your own hand. But if you want a tutorial on how to do textures like that, you know, just uh, comment down below, and I'll see if I can do a, a separate tutorial explaining, maybe you know, shortly how to do that in Photoshop or something else. Cool. I will see you soon or next time. Bye.